All right, we begin with the Supreme Court, which issued two major rulings on immigration and climate change this week. In a 5-4 ruling, the high court gave the Biden administration the green light to terminate a border policy that requires asylum seekers to wait in Mexico while their claims are being processed in U.S. courts. And in a separate decision, it delivered a rebuke to the Environmental Protection Agency when it comes to the limits it can impose on greenhouse gas emissions. Joining me now to discuss this and more is New Jersey Congressman Jeff Andrew. Uh, Congressman, we appreciate you being with us. Um, I want to talk a little bit about that first decision. We're talking about the policy remain in Mexico. The lower courts had originally blocked the Biden administration from ending the policy. The Supreme Court essentially ruled here that this was permissive but not mandatory. Where do those legal challenges go from here? Well, it's going to be interesting to find out, but it's certainly of great concern. It wouldn't be if we had a president, if we had a majority party, if we had a Congress that was doing the right thing, building the wall, building our borders, making sure we had enough border patrol, we could deal with this without any problem. This is the issue. It was the only vehicle. It was the only way that we could try to control the just constant pouring in of illegal folks. And let's understand what they bring with them. They bring, in some cases, diseases. Some of them are obviously on the terrorism list that we know of a certain number of them, more than 50 at this point. But there are those that we haven't caught or we don't know about. You know where they are? They're in America. They're in our country. They're in our cities. They're in our rural areas. Um, it's a really serious business. And we are spending our American tax dollars on legal aid for them, on transportation for them, on literally domicile homes for them, places for them to live. No country in its right mind does this, and it's really going to hurt the country. So while the, the court may be correct constitutionally, the problem is under this particular president, we have a real issue now because we're going to have millions more crossing the border. The court has to do what the court has to do. It's a judicial branch. It does what's right. This is a good court. They really literally live and breathe by the Constitution. The problem is our executive branch and our legislative branch are completely failing and destroying our country. And in a separate ruling, the Supreme Court siding with conservative states and fossil fuel companies saying that the EPA doesn't have a broad authority to make to impose limits rather on greenhouse gas emissions related to climate change. Um, how do you see this playing out on a state by state basis right now? Because that's where the decision goes back to. Well, and it should go back to the states and we should have individual legislators and people, just people making these decisions. These bureaucracies were making decisions that did not represent the legislative intent of the law that they say they were basing them upon. In other words, they were making rules and regulations that didn't relate to actually what the law was that legislators passed at every level, both in our state level and at our federal level. That was wrong, that was bad. They were creating a lot more red tape. They were actually, again, diminishing the country, holding us back, making us weaker can't compete as well with China, can't compete with other countries as well, because we have bureaucrats who nobody elected, who nobody really cares about, making decisions that actually harm our country. So that was a darn good ruling. I'm glad they made it. And hopefully this will open things up so that we can still be concerned about the environment. We still can do the right thing. But at the same time, not the wads and wads of red tape and the destructive policies that have nothing to do with what the law was originally supposed to impose. And we've heard a lot of charged up rhetoric right now from Democrats after the Supreme Court's decision to overturn the 1973 landmark ruling Roe v. Wade. We know President Biden held a roundtable with Democratic governors talking a little bit about what their action plan is from here. He, I, I want to read a bit of his statement. He said, first, if extremist governors try to block a woman from traveling from her state, that prohibits her from seeking the medical help she needs to a state that provides that care. The federal government will act to protect her bedrock right through the attorney general's office. And he said if states try to block a woman from getting medication from the FDA that they've already approved, 
my administration will act to protect that woman's right to that medication. How does all of this impact New Jersey? Well, New Jersey is going to be a state, you know, that truthfully wants as much abortion as possible. So uh, our governor has made it a sanctuary state for abortion. There's actually been a suggestion by one of the mayors of one of the biggest cities that it become a tourism draw that people come to New Jersey, they get an abortion, and then they have a great time going in and out of New York City and northern New Jersey in that area. Let's be clear about something. Whether you support uh, abortion rights or whether you are pro-life, pro-life or pro-choice, this is a terrible decision for a woman, for a family, for a couple, for anyone to have to make. It's a loss of life. Spiritually, it's not good for us. And this is what I say about the ruling and about abortion in general. We should think about this. Spiritually, it certainly is difficult on us. Follow the science. You know what we know now? If you look at the three-dimensional imagery that we get and that we look at, we can see these aren't just amorphous blobs of inhuman tissue, that these are little children, that they have toes and fingers and eyes and mouths, and that many of them, when they're born prematurely, still live. So we know that there's much more there. And we know that this is a very serious issue for people, and it's a very sad issue. So let's not make I wanna, it out like it's yeah. some great right. I just want to get one more um, reaction from you before we have to go. Uh, we heard sure. a testimony this week from Cassidy Hutchinson before the January 6th House Select Committee, uh, where she claimed that former President Trump knew about the dangers surrounding the January 6th riot and attacked his Secret Service detail in an attempt to join the rioters at the Capitol. Uh, we have since learned from Secret Service that they were never asked from the committee to provide any testimony before she went live with that. Uh, I want to get your reaction to how the committee has been conducting this testimony from Cassidy Hutchinson, uh, and again, claims that Republicans have said all along that this is not a, a, a uh, unbiased court here. This is, they're not, be, nobody's allowed to be cross-examined here. This is a Trump, I hate to use the term, Trumped up television production that literally is not telling the truth, that hates Republicans, that hates the president, and they're lying. And so many things they're saying are not true. This is not an objective, scientific, thoughtful process where we try, where we literally are trying to learn how we can do better and see better. How come we don't care about what happened with Antifa in the summer? How come we don't care where Antifa gets its money, where Antifa gets its transportation, where Antifa gets the drugs that are involved, where Antifa comes from? We don't worry about that. And we actually have a television producer who's putting this on, trying to make it as melodramatic. And it's quite frankly, not as good as the soap operas that have been interrupted. I, the biggest complaint I've had about it are from lots of people who watch General Hospital and other soap operas and say they're tired of their, their, their soap opera being interrupted because the soap opera has more truth to it than any of this stuff does. It's nonsense. They don't want to know the truth. It isn't the truth. It never will be the truth. And I hope someday we really do tell the truth and find out what really happened. President Trump wanted the National Guard to be there. He was worried about the safety. He told people not to commit violence. No Republican ever wanted violence there. Yeah. And we'll be hearing a lot more about that through July, as the committee says it plans to extend those hearings. Congressman Van Drew, we appreciate you being with us. We want to wish you a very happy Fourth of July weekend. Happy Fourth of July. Celebrate independence. Absolutely.